You guys, uh, we're not going to waste any more time because uh, joining us in the studio, uh, she's very beautiful and uh, and she's got a great new jewelry line. Uh, and please welcome to the show, Emily Maynard. There we go. <laughs> Good morning. First of all, I'm so impressed at how beautiful you look this morning. Wow. Like, thank you. for this early in the morning, I'm like, I don't even think I got lotion on my skin. Like, Brandon already said that my hair is extra flock of seagulls today. So, <laughs> I think it looks great. <laughs> See, <laughs> it was a compliment. <laughs> I don't know. I told him that I think the worst thing in the world you can say to me is to call my hair flock of seagulls. <laughs> uh, you can say my hair is spirited. You can say it it's has some extra position. Yes. <laughs> I know. Well, I got it cut yesterday, so I'm having to learn how to how to do it. But who cares about that? Let's talk about you. Uh, Emily, you have a brand new jewelry line. Uh, and what I like and the, my favorite part about it is that the word affordable is in is in the description of this jewelry line. Because I think that is so important because so many people get out here and they, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, buy this beautiful twenty five thousand dollar diamond necklace that I just designed. And you're like, who's going to be able to buy that? But you've you've and you've designed this beautiful uh, and affordable line of jewelry. What was the inspiration behind this? Well, thank you. Um, it's been a lot of fun, and I started it with um, a company a jewelry line that I already wore a lot on the show called Town and Reese. It started by two moms in Charlotte, and I just became friends with them. And um, they asked me after the Bachelorette was over if I wanted to do my own line, and of course I said yes. Because why, cause why not? What girl wouldn't? <laughs> yeah. had, had, you yeah. ever, had you ever designed jewelry before, like as a little girl making little bracelets or stuff? I mean, I did like the friendship bracelets mm-hmm. and stuff, and I um, I taught a jewelry class. Through, you taught a jewelry class? Through my, through my church um, to a middle school, and but it was like putting beads on a string. I That's where it ends. They were yeah. much better at it than I was. So. so there are young kids out there who already have part of the Emily Maynard collection. Sure, sure. <laughs> the yeah. early, the with early some, designs. With some plastic beads. Yeah, well, or, what was, or what was, remember the ones we used to do at camp where you would like take like the, it was like a piece of flat plastic and you would braid them oh the, the lanyards y- yeah is that what is that what they were and like you would braid and then and mm-hmm. it was kind of like a square like a, it became i don't know what i'm yeah it became like oh like hemp bracelets kind of but they were plastic like, okay. you know i'm like talking the 80s and the, we made them like in boy scouts and stuff mm-hmm. but yeah but it was, and we'd make it and i made them in church too that's what that's yeah. why it just came to my mind so yeah, there could be people out there already owning part of your yep, your original, original design. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where can people get your jewelry? They can get it on my website, emilymaynard.com. And is it is it? Do you think that that is do do people? Because I don't really even know anymore. Because I mean, obviously, I'm not a big jewelry fashionista. Mm-hmm. But uh, is it is it easy to sell when it's just online and when people can't go into a store and actually see it or is that something that you're looking to do is to get it into stores and for the first couple of months I just wanted to keep it um, on my website so people knew that it was very personal to me and it's not something I just threw my name on and that I really am involved in every aspect of it but um, uh, in the next couple weeks well we might be seeing it in a store so you so you are working to try to get it like that is a that is a goal is, to, is sure. to get it, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like your publicist in the corner nodding. Yeah. <laughs> so this is one of your pieces that you're wearing today, right? Yep. All the pieces are named after my daughter's friends from school. Oh, that's cool. And this is the Ellie piece. The Ellie piece. So mm-hmm. is it inspired by her friends? Um, or you just name them after? We just her named friends? it after them. Okay. <laughs> so where did, where did this one come from? Because you designed all these, right? I did. This is um, the pendant on here. It's actually I went to an antique show mm-hmm. in um, Georgia, and I saw this really cool drawer pool on a chest of drawers, and so this is the drawer okay. pool. Oh, that is so cool. So now, so are, is each piece an original piece? Because or, or are you able to replicate that? I mean, are you able to make? Are you able to make a lot of those, or is it just like once oh, you yeah. have that one necklace, that's the only one you get? Oh yeah, there's 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 lots of them to be bought <laughs> on my website. So <laughs> so basically, so once you go out and you've designed this one piece, mm-hmm. like you, because that is a cool thing to know that that's like the part of the drawer pull. Mm-hmm. But then and then you take it to the manufacturers and they're able to make more of them. Yeah, that is really cool. I like that. Now, why is there no? I don't see a single piece of jewelry for me on there. There's no men's jewelry on there. Well, I mean, some <laughs> of the bracelets maybe. You know? uh, yeah, I, th- I thought like, I'm like there, there were one. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like there's one or two that I could maybe squeeze around my squeeze around my wrist. But is that something that you think that you would want to do? Is to make 
is to make a men's line or is it just like no just in the girls jewelry you know i know nothing about men's fashion nothing i know if i like it or not if i see it on a guy but if you t- ask me if i like this tie i would have no idea so i probably should not get into that <laughs> business that which is completely fair i yeah. think that's fine we uh we actually have a collar which we never know what's going to happen here Uh-oh. on the bob show but we do have a caller who do we have on the line my name is Molly from Oklahoma. Hi, Molly from Oklahoma. I'm guessing you're calling in to talk to Emily. Yeah. Great. What's Hi. your question? What's your question for her? Hey, Emily. It's Molly. Hi, Molly. Hey, um, Hannah and Mia want me to ask you if you are going to do a children's jewelry line. Oh my goodness! I know you. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> um. Well, I don't know, but Ricky loves to wear a lot of the beaded bracelets and the little, um, the scarlet bracelets. She likes to wear those Mm because they're adjustable. Um, But you never know. I never thought I'd be doing women's jewelry, so who knows? Yeah, okay. All right. And what is your um, favorite online store to shop at? Um, I really like uh, ASOS.com. ASOS? And um, what else? Uh, Ease Closet. That's a good one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank awesome. you so much, Molly. Yes, thank you for calling well, in. thank you. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Bye, Emily. Bye. Bye. S- speaking of questions, Emily, on your website, you have a whole great section called Ask Emily. I do. Where people can just write what they want. And they and, do. And they do. <laughs> I, was, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the more interesting, you know, obviously not the negative ones, but what are some of the more interesting, fun things that you get from people all over the world? People ask the most random things. Sometimes they're really nice. Sometimes they're, you know, they sting a little. But um, for the most part, everybody's been really sweet. But they want to know every detail. Like, how do you fold your clothes? I mean, they want to know everything. And some some stories I get are really personal. And um, they ask advice. And I try to get back to as many as I can. Where's the weirdest place you've gotten an email from? Um, I th- I think um, my season just aired in Iceland, maybe. Okay. Um, so The Bachelor is a huge show. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it's no credit of my own. It's just from the show. But right. um, but so you're getting people emailing you from Iceland. That w- and that's actually interesting. I didn't even didn't even dawn on me that The Bachelor would be syndicated to other countries. Oh yeah, it's just in um, South Africa, um, Australia, all over. Can you tell based on where the questions are coming in from? You're like, wow, I'm getting a lot from New Zealand right now. I guess the show, especially must be on out Twitter. There. Yeah. yeah, especially on Twitter. Well, because well, then people reach out to you. Well, since we're talking about The Bachelor, because of course we would be remiss if we didn't bring it up. Um, you did not one; you did two seasons, right? <laughs> so I you did. went on there and you did The Bachelor, and then you turned around and you were The Bachelorette. I am fascinated. So it is no secret uh, we have Lawan calling in. He's a former contestant on Big Brother. Uh, my other co-host is Jeff Schroeder, uh, also from Big Brother. Uh, and you, the reason we were talking about North Carolina is because Jeff Schroeder is dating Jordan Lloyd, who's from North Carolina. Uh, he's from North Carolina. I just spent a year, last year in North Carolina wow. working on Iron Man 3. We love North Carolina. But that being said, Brendan, as an actor, is not a big fan of reality TV. I have mine. <laughs> I have mine that I love. But there is one show that I've never fully understood, and that is The Bachelor. I still don't understand yeah. it. <laughs> well, and I'm curious what... What made you want to go on it? Honestly, I have no idea. Um, I always said I would never do it because I've been a huge fan of the show forever and my girlfriends and I would be at home watching it and be like, would you ever do that? No way. Oh my gosh. You're beautiful. Like I, I well, really, I mean, you. you're, I mean, look, I get to look at you right now. There's no photoshopping. Like you are, your skin is stunning. Like every, you are as beautiful it's as ever. Spackle. <laughs> <laughs> well then you should, that's what you should be marketing that is spackle because it's, it's very, but you're beautiful. I, I'm curious because one of the things we like to talk about on the show is definitely sort of, um, all of our inner workings, you know, mm-hmm. because I think I think it's a great example of, uh, you know, oh, well, she's so beautiful, so she doesn't need to do this. Or, you know, we had a we had a guy on yesterday who's an amazing athlete, who's in amazing shape. And we spent a lot of time sort of talking about, you know, his demons that he spent all these years thinking he wasn't worthy. So I'm always kind of fascinated by this. But I'm really curious why you would have decided to do to do that sure. show and, yeah, and to I'm, not only do it once but to do it twice my family asked the same question <laughs> my mom still doesn't understand um honestly it took a lot of convincing for me to do it um but i had my daughter when i was really young mm-hmm. and at the age of i think i was 25 when i went on the show 24 
I was living the life of, you know, a desperate housewife at yeah. home, you know, just, I, I, I wanted to go out and do something that was totally out of character for me. And it wasn't about, you know, getting married or falling in love. That was an added bonus, sure. obviously not getting married, yeah. <laughs> sadly, but <laughs> I did fall in love. Um, but it was more just like about the experience and having fun. And I did that. I had the time of my life. Yeah. Very cool. Well, and that and that part of it is great. I mean, I, I think it's I think it's great because I think that's an important thing that I think maybe so many people out there don't understand. You know, I think I, I love that idea that it was like we all sort of need to do things to get ourselves out of ruts to get ourselves to sort of like break up whatever sort of like monotony maybe we've built up in our life or sometimes yeah. just our own comfort zones, mm -hmm. you know, so I can see why you're doing that. Um, now, how did it feel when they approached you to say, we want you to be the bachelorette? Like, what was that? <laughs> were, were you, what was your reaction to that? No way. Yeah. No way. Um, it took about a year um, for me to, finally come around to the idea of it. Um, they asked me to do it right after my season was over. And I said, not a chance. My life was like so crazy and I just wanted to get back to being a mom in Charlotte. And um, then they came back around um, two seasons later after The Bachelor um, had ended. And I don't know, I just, I had prayed about it and I had peace about it. And I thought it would be, you know, a really good experience and fun. And if I found somebody great, if I don't, that's fine too. But just like, in what lifetime do you yeah. get that opportunity to go and travel and um, just take a couple weeks and be crazy? Yeah, which it, which is and, and I'm curious from a production standpoint, is it is it do you go and do you live somewhere and how long is it? I mean, like because I know you have your daughter and your daughter mm -hmm. is very important to you. Mm -hmm. Is it something because again, like we talk about Survivor, you go off on an island for 39 days. Sure. Big Brother, you're in a house for 100 days and completely sequestered from your life. Is the Bachelor? Do they do it that way, or do you come and go? How does how does that sort of work? Well, every season they filmed in LA. Um, for my season, I said I wouldn't leave Charlotte, expecting nice. the, expecting <laughs> them to be like, yeah, right, we're gonna call somebody uh -huh. else. But they did. They um, found a house in Charlotte for all the guys to live in, and I still got to make lunch and do carpool and all those mom things that are. So you got to live. Home. You got to live at home. I did, and then Good for you. Um, we started traveling. Um, couple couple weeks in and Ricky came to a lot of the places they the um the producers behind the bachelor are so good to me and they're like family to me and they just adore Ricky and so she got to travel and a lot of the producers and Chris Harrison bring their kids and um so it was this whole kids club and she had so much fun oh that's a, that's actually that's good to hear and how long does it so how long does that does the whole process take from like about three months it's so three months mm -hmm. wow well, I suppose because there has to be some element of you got to get to know these guys if oh, you're supposed yeah. to fall in love. Exactly. You can't just be like, three weeks in, I choose this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> the three months still. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's still, still pretty crazy. It is, but. it is. And how is, do you feel a pressure that you have to like choose one of them? I mean, I know you have to choose one of them to date, but are you, because again, uh, full disclosure, I did watch and I actually loved the season of The Bachelorette with Trista and Ryan, and I know they've done very well for themselves. Yeah. I, I did watch that season, and then I think, I, I, I see, I could do The Bachelorette better than I could do The Bachelor, probably because, let's be let's face it, I'd rather <laughs> sit and watch a house full of hunky men, you know, Me clamoring too. over themselves <laughs> than, yeah, I don't, uh, a, a house full of women, I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was the difference like between being one of the contestants for the for the guy versus having all these guys competing for you? Being the bachelorette was way more fun. Well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a girl's girl all day long, so I loved being in the house and, you know, doing each other's nails. It was just like a sleepover all the time, and um, it was like my college experience of living in dorms and all that. So I had fun with it for the short time. I, I don't think I could do it again, though. I know I couldn't do it yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, how, and how has it been since? Because it's been, it's been interesting – because uh, I, I read a couple articles. I read like the article on the Charlotte Observer and there was something and coincidentally just on Tuesday's show for whatever reason I went off. I was furious at an article mm -hmm. that I clicked on about Elton John and uh, it was it was literally about Elton John walking into you know he his car pulls up he gets out of the car and he has to walk 10 feet to get into a restaurant. This restaurant is full of paparazzi on the sidewalk. They're completely surrounding him. He almost trips and he does trip. He almost falls 
And, you know, and he tells them to F off twice during this thing. Well, the article that TMZ wrote was just, it was so nasty. And they blamed Elton John like it was all his fault. And they were very entitled. And there was a part where they're like, you know, it's kind of funny that he almost tripped and fell. They literally wrote, it's kind of funny. So and me on this show, I get very upset. I, my whole pur- purpose of doing this show is... I believe in the positive side of things. I mm-hmm. don't want to sit here and talk about Lindsay Lohan and Amanda Bynes and go down that road. And I know that for you, you've, you've, ha- you like, cause like you said, you didn't want to be an actress. You didn't want to get out there and seek fame and, and, you know, you're not out at the club every night. You're not the one trying to be, you know, spilling onto the sidewalk here mm-hmm. in Los Angeles. And yet you've, st- but you've also really been thrust into, this spotlight and this magnifying glass and because of sort of that reality TV thing and with Twitter, people sort of like are feel like they're entitled to have these pieces of you. What is, what is that like? Can you talk to that? Yeah. I mean, I, my life has gone back to normal for the most part. Um, but for a couple months it was really crazy. Um, but I get it. And Unlike Elton John, who actually has a talent and, you know, is an amazing performer and singer and everything. I didn't, I I sought this out. I really, I did. And I can own up to that. And um, so they are kind of entitled to know what happened in my relationship and if it ended and But do you feel like there's moments like that's, that's like, that's, that's coming on here and doing this show and being like, hey, here's an update on my life. I, I get bothered with like the invasive stuff like oh, if, if sure. they're if, like if they're coming after your your daughter or oh, if they're for sure. you know and, and also the comments I mean like that's what really gets me are the comments and I know you had mentioned that like there's people and you know there's people that just they get behind their computer screen and they just say things that they would never say to another human oh, yeah. being's face. I do not understand that, but it really, for a long time, it really hurt my heart, and I took everything so personally, and I would sit and just, there could be the nicest article written about me, but then I would go straight to the comments, and that's where, Mm. like, the most awful human beings just live there, (laughs) and I would read these things, and I'm like, I could never, I'm not even that creative, like, to come up with the things that they say, but after a while, it just really made me sad for them, and it makes me want to, like, just... You know, maybe they just need a hug yeah. or something. <laughs> I don't know, but it just makes me feel sad for them. Sp- uh, speaking of helping people out, I you've gone to Africa a couple times, or I have. And, mm-hmm. and what's that like? That's one of the few places I've never been, and I'd be it's fascinated amazing. knowing about that. It's awesome. I um I want to go back. You know, I'd go back every year if I could. Um, I want to take my daughter when she gets old enough. Um, it's really just. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it, but it really kind of helps you put your whole life into perspective. And I think that we're all here to serve. And um, it's, it was just an awesome, awesome opportunity. Can you discuss some of the service that you do over there? Um, well, the first time, oh, the second time I went, um, we went to Ghana um, uh, with People Water, which is um, they do water wells. Mm-hmm. And so um, we went over there for that. And then the last time I went, just got back in August, um, was with a company called Fashionable. And um, they uh, make scarves. They t- taught the women in Ethiopia to um, make these really beautiful scarves. So we went over there, and um, it was just really, really amazing. And just um, I love, I love how they branded themselves because it, they, they they've actually called themselves fashion able. Yeah. So they've they've like the fashion is lowercase and then able is in, so it's like fashion able as a, right. as in a as in a way to say like because like you said they're yeah. they're training these women to sort of give them something. And all the women are. Um, got out of um, trafficking and oh, wow. um, it's really cool all the scarves are named after the women who make them and it's really cool to be able to put a face and a family and a story to each of these scarves and it makes it so much more personal that, uh, that is great how did you get involved with them um well uh, Dana Weiss she runs a blog called Possessionista mm-hmm. and um, I became friends with her just through Twitter and you know that whole crazy world and she um, n- knew Barrett Ward who started um, fashionable scarves and we just kind of got to talking and I really like the scarves and um, wore them all the time and yeah just so, it sounds cool. amazing I don't know and and then and tell people really quickly because I think so many of us here in America we take such we, we take for granted the fact that we have flowing running water oh yeah you know I mean even us here in California as we're like facing droughts constantly like it hasn't rained in 10 years <laughs> and you know like we we don't think about it and you talk about going over there and you're building wells because these people have no water yeah. at all like what what is that what is that like try to try to the, helping people have some perspective here 
I mean, like the, the you know here we are, you know we're all sitting here with our you know beautiful bottles of water. Like these people don't, they're, they're lucky if they get a cup of water a week. Yeah, I mean, um, to go and see their water sources was so sad. It's literally a stream with dirt, and they have to stand in it, usually barefoot, and walk for miles and miles. And um, just their living conditions are so, um, you know, it, it blows my mind yeah. living here. It's worse than I ever thought. And um, it really just makes me more grateful for everything that I have and lets me know, like, no, I didn't have a bad day. Yeah. I haven't ever had a bad day <laughs> right. compared mm. to what they live every day. But the happiness they have in their hearts is so inspiring. And that's what that's exactly what so I was going to get cool. to. They have this spirit, though. That's always like, you know, I mean, I know that obviously like Sally Struthers always will like, you know, pan over to, you know, the, the child. So, yeah, the, the sad one. But if you watch so many of these other things like they're even though they're barefoot and, you know, and they're filthy and they're everything else, they smile and they're dancing and they're singing and. In here we are, like you just said, we have all of these things, and what are we doing? We're complaining. Like, we're half the time, we're grumpier and grouchier. Oh, yeah. You know, with all of our comforts, and, and they have nothing. I think that's such a, I don't know, that's always, I, that says something so about the human spirit and how off balance we, we really, we, we've really made ourselves. Do you think you would ever create your own uh, charity organization yourself? I would love to do something like that. Um, I just haven't found the one thing that I'm just crazy, crazy passionate about yet. Mm -hmm. um, I know um, and, and how to how to really put that into action. Well, it sounds it sounds like you it sounds like doing The Bachelor did exactly what you wanted to, which was to get you out of your comfort zone and create a new experience. And what's wonderful is that you're now able to use use your new platform to live life and create and create a whole new adventure which, and I, which I applaud yeah and, and, to do yeah. and of course to design jewelry yeah. that everyone can purchase at emilymaynard.com uh, and you can follow your you have a facebook page it's officially official emily maynard and you're on twitter at emily maynard and instagram at emily g maynard i was going to ask you so you said that you name your pieces after your uh, daughter's friends what happens when your daughter starts to get in fights with her friends because you know that's inevitable that <laughs> well she's just switched schools this year and everybody's like did you do that because you need more friends <laughs> oh, <right no>. <laughs> <laughs> well and i can just be like i'm not talking to annie anymore so you know what you better call that bracelet something else. oh yeah i mean she's already said like i don't like that one you know if she gets into a fight with a friend she's like, i'm not wearing that uh, <laughs> oh i love that that is girls <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. girls exactly uh but um but good for you and of course is there the final question how do you feel about love now are you still ho are you still a hopeless romantic of course i'm only 27 so i haven't given up on it totally um but yeah i think that um you know What's three failed engagements? <laughs> you know, that happens to everybody, Wait, right? You had three, no, not well, all because of the show. Two. Two were because mm, of the yeah, show. Yeah, I know. It sounds really bad whenever I say it, and now I'm kind of wishing I but could you take know those what? words back. <laughs> no. But you, no, but you know what? It doesn't sound, it doesn't sound bad, because you know what? The truth of the matter is, you're going to find love with the right guy well, at the yes. right time. And honestly, two failed engagements is better than two failed marriages. This yes. is where it's tell like, myself. oh, I went down this awful road and, and, and got into this terrible commitment, put my daughter in harm's way. You know, yeah. it's much better to be like, no, 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 we figured it out during that trial period. Yeah. yeah. And everyone got out while it was good to get out. Yeah. yeah. And you have a daughter. Your stakes are a lot higher. Exactly. Oh, yeah. they're, they're a lot higher than just the fame of reality TV. You, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it, it would have been beautiful. Again, I love that Trista and Ryan, of all the people of that franchise, they truly, they made it work. They went Ashley away. Ashley and they, JP? See, they well, see, I don't got, know. They enough. just got married <laughs> last year. Oh, did they? So see, yeah, but it's it but it's but it, it yeah, it's it's nice to know that it works. And look, there's some people that speed dating works for them, and right. they, you know, and I, look, I met my boyfriend seven years ago on MySpace. So wow. different things work for different people, <laughs> but you know, but you just you just you just never know. But yeah. it's but it's I I appreciate and respect you for the fact that, like you said, it's better to have failed engagements than to have failed marriages because. That would have been way worse. And I can see these people doing it because, like we just talked about, there's so much pressure from the public, from the audience. That's like, oh, well, we want to see you get married. We want to see you oh, yeah. live happily ever after. And it's like, 
well, this might not necessarily be that person. I want to be happily ever after too, but this might not be the right person. So I think it's a great thing. Uh, Emily, you are delightful and thank beautiful. You. Uh, thank you so much for coming in today. And again, one more time, you guys check out her jewelry line. It's affordable. I love that word. Uh, but it's available at emilymaynard.com, M-A-Y-N-A-R-D. And you can find all of her other information there. And uh, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. And our friend Lawan is going to call in and talk about last night's over-the-top survivor. Don't go anywhere. This is the Bob Show in the mornings right here on UBN Radio.